Hello, this is John at GitLab. I want to share a little bit about how we manage commitments inside of strategic marketing using issues and labels. So let me jump in and I want to just walk through this process about how do we manage our commitments using issues and labels. So in strategic marketing, we've defined a set of processes for how we go about doing work and making sure we know what we're committed to. So for example, often we're asked to work on events, where we'll help with messaging or we'll help with developing content or presenting content. Uh, we might go and work on campaigns and a whole host of other things. So we've defined a process and, and it's, it's on a page it's in our strategic marketing handbook that describes how to do it. The flow looks like this. Uh, we start all of our issues as what we call a new request. And this is a way for anybody in the organization to ask us to help them support an effort. And there's a template we've defined, I'll show you that in a moment. And that template then, and the process, we work through a series of scoped labels. The scoped labels go from it being a new request where we, we don't know which team is going to work on it, to understanding it's going to go to a specific team. And we, we use our triage process to decide where that's gonna go. And as a team, we do a daily standup with leadership to decide who's gonna work on these issues. Sometimes they're obvious, sometimes they're not, and we need to talk about it. Typically, the issues will then flow to backlog. We can't work on everything immediately. We're not sitting around waiting. There's people working on things actively. And so in, in practice, this is where it should go. In reality, oftentimes we assign work straight away because we perceive the importance of it. And that's a process we're working on ourselves. And so the next step really would be it, it's assigned to someone to work on. And we usually will attach a milestone to these to see how it's going and how it's tracking. Once the work is done, it's completed and closed. So we, we move it to a state complete and, the, and then automatically we'll close the issue. The other two options really is this could be an issue or an ask for some other team. So we would wanna transfer that to the other team and close the issue. Similarly, also, if it was declined, if it's something we're not going to do, it doesn't fit our priorities and we can attach the label declined and also close the issue. So let me show you how that works in practice. So let's jump over here. Uh, this is a board we're using, one of the two ways we use to manage this process when it comes into strategic marketing is in the form of an issue board. So this is a, a, a typical GitLab issue board. Uh, this issue board is defined by all things that have the SM request label on them. So this label defines the process. This is not the scope label. The scope labels are the columns. So here's a new request. Here's triage. We have six new requests. We have several things in backlog. And if I scroll a little further over, we'll see that there's uh, several hundred things assigned to people. And so between backlog and assigned, there's more people, more things assigned than, uh, than are active, you know, than are in backlog. And then you also will notice that that both declined and completed are empty because, well, we close the issues when they're done. Uh, in the other video I did earlier, the, the GitLab triage bot will go through and automatically close those for us so we don't have to do that manually, so we're more efficient. If I were to take one of these, and we'll take, for example, you know, if I were to go through this at the moment and realize, oh, here's something about a demo, that's probably, uh, typically that's the technical marketing team. So if I was going to do this for, us right now, I can click on this issue and we can say, well, this should go to technical marketing and I can change it, the label here to add the technical marketing team. I'm gonna show you a couple of ways that you can do this. This is technical marketing. And the other thing I wanna do is change this to triage. And you can see a couple of their teams are doing, but there's the SM triage label. And there we go. We've changed those two labels. If we go back to the board, you will see that this issue has moved over. I could have just moved it over, but I also wanted to add or assign the triage label as well. So I wanted to do two things at once. So that's why I did it from there. You could also do it from the sidebar. That's another way to do it. I'm gonna show you one other way that we do it a lot of times uh, on these issues. And uh, here's a, uh, a webinar. So this looks like it's probably something that the product marketing team would do. So I'm going to go into this one and I'm going to skim through it. And this is the template we use also. We have a template that sets it up and says it's a demo or a workshop. So a little bit different. Uh, it's not product marketing, it's technical marketing again. So let's go ahead and assign it to them. This time I'm going to use quick actions. I like quick actions because they're easy to use once you've remembered a few shortcuts. So you type in the shortcut label and I'm going to go tech and there's tech marketing, and I'm gonna do a second label, 
and we're going to put it in triage. There it is. Comment done, and I'm back. I use, I use quick labels, quick actions a lot to move things along. So we just moved two things through triage from one step to another. That's the easy way to do it. Uh, and the other way I, we often do it, or I'll often work on things, is I use the issue list. The issue list is really powerful, and it's one of the features in GitLab that I, I use a lot if I need to do more, make more than one change. Let me refresh this so we can see some things drop off. This is now filtered based upon new requests. But what's really awesome about this view is if I want to make multiple changes to a group of issues all at one time, I can do that. So in the scenario I was just in where I wanted to make two things, technical marketing and triage, I could have done that. And let's just, I'm going to do that here. I'm going to pretend. I don't think I have exactly the example, but if I wanted to change, we'll say all of these issues and I wanted to put them into, we'll say they're going to be PMM. And... Here's the PMM label there. And I wanted to put it into triage. Again, I'm not going to actually do this, but this is an example of how I could do it. I could click on update all and all of those, those two actions will be applied to it. I could also assign it to someone. I could open it or close it. And I could move it from one milestone to another. Both of those are options. I'm not gonna do it, but that's the idea. The issue list is really powerful to make those kind of mass updates. Uh, to manage and track the process, we can manage it from both looking at the boards that I showed you earlier. We can also look at GitLab Insights, and I'll do a separate video on Insights and show you how to set this up. But Insights is a way to look at the status of issues. This is looking at all issues open or closed since January, and to show the status. So I can see that, you know, this is the group of things that were assigned. Uh, there's some that were undefined, and those, I think, are closed issues that I don't have a bot cleaning them up, so I'll probably change the bot to, to clean those up. But if I don't want to look at them, I can just click on that, and they'll go away, which is kind of a cool feature. And I can see that there are a number of things in the backlog, and this is also the observation that I've been making for our, with our team that we probably need to think more about how we use the backlog and versus assigning things in real time, but that's okay. But either way, GitLab Insights is a great way to do that. And you can get to GitLab Insights if you want to use it. It's, it's found over here on the left hand under Analytics, under Insights, Analytics, and then Insights. So that's a good, it for a quick summary. If you're interested in what we're doing in strategic marketing and want to understand uh, how we define it and how we define the process, uh, that is all at the strategic marketing level. I have a, I'll put a link to that up at the end of the video. Uh, and you can go there. The last thing I wanted to share is, is to make it easy for people to create issues for our process and for the process, we've created a template to do that. If you're not using issue templates, then that's another thing you should probably think really hard about. How can you use templates to make it easy for people to do things quickly? And here under strategic marketing help team, help slash support, that section of this is where we have this whole process defined. And there's a link that says open a request. And this, link will actually create a new issue using the correct template and the template is right here and we can do a separate and while we're here i might as well show you how to create a template as well templates are super powerful and in strategic marketing we use a bunch of them for different scenarios uh, if we want to do a uh, an action item out of a qbr or uh, a virtual event you know, there's a whole host of different templates you can use. And you can also do quick actions when you create a template to mean to, to assign a label or do different things. Quick actions that I mentioned earlier in the comments are defined here below. But to create a template, it's pretty simple. Uh, you just simply go to the repository for the project up in the files section of that repository. And there should be a folder called .gitlab. And in that folder .gitlab, there is another folder called issue underscore templates. If those don't exist in your project, go ahead and create them. Because what happens is it looks in issues underscore templates, .gitlab slash issues underscore templates. It, GitLab will look there for templates if you want to have a template. And the documentation is all really well documented. But this is an example of the template that we use to create that. And you'll notice here at the bottom, we assign some labels. We put the strategic marketing request label on it. That puts it into the process flow. We make them all new requests, and we put a couple other labels on them to track it. We assign it a wait, and away it goes. So with that, that's the quick summary, a quick wrap. Uh, happy to answer any questions. And if you see anything wrong or have any comments about the work we've done or things that you think you could make better at the bottom of our pages, it says, everyone, please edit this page. Everyone can contribute. So if you open a merge request, we'll be glad to consider that and, and look at how do we make things better. So with that. Thank you very much. Signing off.